is not spoken that needs to be spoken, that needs to be heard. Uh, it's a word that people need to hear. Uh, Sometimes you hear a certain sound, and it sounds good, but it's not the word that the Lord wants us to give. So we're going to speak that word that a lot of people may not want to hear or is trying to get away from uh, the unspoken word. We're going to start off by talking <clears throat> about love because we understand that uh, the scripture says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple, if what? If you have love one to the other. If we can't love one another, we might as well just throw in the towel and give up because he's not going to recognize your work and your labor if it's not done in the spirit of love. <clears throat> All right, look and turn with me to the book of 1 John, the first epistle of John. Chapter number 4 and verse 18. We're going to just do a little expository teaching today because that's what time it is. That's what we need. We need to uh, take our time and go through the word. And Shouting is okay if that's what you love and that's what you do. But there's more profit in the word than it is the bodily exercise. Now, I believe in exercise. I got a little regimen myself that I try to keep going. Amen. To try to preserve my health. I'm going to give him praise. <clears throat> but the word will do you better than exercise. All right, in the book of first epistle of John, chapter number four, we're going to start with the first uh, verse. It says, Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit <clears throat> that confesses that Jesus Christ, Yahweh, is come in the flesh, is of God. You got people in the world today that got problems with the Messiah. You got problems because he has been so distorted by generations upon generations. Uh, some people don't believe that you need the Messiah. Don't believe that you need the blood that was shed. But I want you to know without the shedding of blood, that there is no remission of sin. If you don't have the blood applied to your life, you still are yet in your sin. All right, then the next verse says, verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. So we see that there's a spirit already in the world. And it's taking over right now. There's a spirit in the world that's deceiving people by the thousands. Making them think that you don't need to go to the house of the Lord anymore. You know, I'm, I'm finding that and I'm hearing that more and more people... Say, I don't do church no more. I don't believe in that. I don't, I don't believe in, 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 in having to go and, and pray to somebody you can't see. Come on, give him praise. But I want you to know that he's more real than what you can see. Because he's the one that spoke the entire uh, eternity into existence. The entire world, the the tangible things as well as the intangible things. He spoke it into existence. Christ was pre-existent before he even came in the flesh. Where y'all at? 
He was there in the beginning. And those of us that want to reign with him must acknowledge that. I'm going to drop on down to verse uh, 7. In the same book it says, Beloved, let us, not, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So the scripture said at one time that uh, Christ came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to destroy it, but he came to fulfill it. Amen. What was that fulfillment? He fulfilled it with love. Amen. He took the penalty out of the law that was meted against one another by men. Whereas you saw somebody doing something, you picked up stones and, and, and stoned them to death. He changed that where we don't stone one another anymore. But there is a spiritual penalty. Come on, give God praise. That if you don't get yourself right, you're going to have to suffer the consequences of it. So we got to have the, the right kind of love. It's good for us to dwell together. It's good for us to sit down together. It's good for us to break bread together. It's good for us to talk to one another, see one another, because it's going to come a time where we ain't going to be able to see one another. Not too long ago, we had my sister's funeral, and I haven't seen her since. Come on, give God praise. So at one time or another, you're going to be separated, so you need to take advantage of this opportunity to be able to go over and see your mother, or go over and see your father, your sister, brother, uncle, auntie, or whoever it is, nieces and nephews. It's a blessing to look upon one another. And the, the Most High is, is monitoring your love. We can't be so saved that we don't love one another anymore. And we'll give God praise. All right, we're going to go over to the verse number 18. Same book, first epistle to John, chapter 4, 18, it says, Therefore, there is no fear in love. Read it again. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath taught me. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We can't be afraid of one another. We can't be afraid to come and congregate with one another, sit down with one another, visit one another. Come on, give them praise. Love, amen, will, will keep you together. Love keep a family together. I remember before my mother passed away, she had started having uh, family dinners very often because she wanted to keep the family together. It's often said that that mother is the glue and the fabric that holds that family together. Amen. You can find that to be so true when you experience that. So we need love. Amen. Come on, give them praise. I love the Lord so much when I first got saved that I would sit up in the service when, when it was even boring, when the preacher was boring. I sat up through it because I love. The Most High. Come on, give him praise. And I knew eventually he was going to have somebody that was going to say something that was going to energize my spirit and cause me to be able to go forward. That's what kept me for so long. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. The latter part of that scripture says, He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So I don't need to be scared of you. Amen. You don't need to be scared of me. Right. We don't need to be fearing one another. Amen. We don't need to ostracize each other. Yes, Come on, give them praise. Somebody. I remember one time in the scriptures, in the book of Esther. I'm going to just get that scripture for you. Esther chapter number 9, verse number 2. And I'll read it. To your hearing. Some of you might be able to find it. It's in the Old Testament. 
I know your page is probably sticking together. But Esther 9 and 2 says the, the Jews, but, but I like the word, the Hebrews gathered themselves together in the cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt that no man could withstand them for the fear of them fell upon all the people. See, uh, we need to get back into that position to where people begin to fear us again. You know, back in the day, uh, they used to, I used to hear testimonies of the old people that said that uh, uh, before they got saved, if a saint of the most high was walking down the street, you know, they would honor them, step over to the side and, and give them reverence. But now they have blocked the, the way for you. You have to go all the way around to, to get the pass. Come on, give God praise. They don't honor people that, that serve the Lord. But listen to what I'm going to say here. It's going to come a time that you're going to wish for a true saint of the Most High. I remember back when I was working, the people would give me a little ill treatment. But when they had a problem, they come and run. Can you pray for, for thus and so and for this and that? Come on, give them praise. They'll walk by the church, won't set foot in there until they have a problem. Amen. Then come in with tears rolling down their face. Can you pray? So the prayer of the righteous avails as much. Can I get a witness somebody? So we need to get back to the place where people begin to fear us. Fear us as in the reverence. Not be afraid of us, but have reverence for us. Just like, you know, we have the fear of God. That don't mean we scared of God, but that means we reverence him. Come on, give him praise, somebody. Did anybody fear the Lord? The scriptures say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Then another one said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the capability of knowing how to apply knowledge. You can have knowledge, but don't have wisdom how to use it. <clears throat> Example, case in point. You got the knowledge the cigarettes cause cancer. But folk don't have the wisdom not to smoke them. I'm going to give God praise. So you got to have wisdom to be able to, to, to apply that knowledge to every situation that comes in your life. But in the world that we're living in today, they have found out that other fear. You know that there's a certain fear that, that uh, the Most High put in us that causes us, to our adrenaline to flow. Like if you get afraid, you know, you can run faster. Right. You can jump higher. You can do things. I've heard of people that uh, a car fell on somebody and, and they was able to raise the car because of that fear or that adrenaline that, that, that the Lord gave us, that extra capability. <clears throat> but it could be used against you. I tell the story that I heard that it was a man that uh, was trying to hitch a ride on a train. And he got in this cabin. And lo and behold, when he got in there, he found out he was in a freezer on the train. <clears throat> and he began to try to get out of there because he started feeling like he was cold. I'm going to give God praise. Hallelujah. And he began to shiver and curled up in the a, in a corner of the compartment that he was in. And they tell me in the story that uh, when the conductor was able to stop the train and go and inspect this cabinet, he found the man in there froze to death. 
But guess what? The freezer wasn't even on. Fear caused his biological system to begin to react. You know, people can tell you some things and they play a trick on you. Get on the phone on April Fool's Day and say, uh, so-and-so was in an accident. Your heart start beating and, you know, you, you get all afraid and sometimes you can have a heart attack. And then they turn around and say, April fool. Scare you half to death. But that's how fear works. Fear is causing people to do things in this life that they normally wouldn't do. People won't even buy a car. Some people won't buy a car until they run a Carfax on it, check it out, make sure everything's all right. right. But they'll subject themselves to all kind of uh, uh, treatments right. without even checking it out. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. They trust, they trust, amen, then who, who's saying something? Uh -huh. Come on, give God praise. I'm, I'm, I have to word my mouth because, you know, right, right. they after me. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. You got to use wisdom. Come on, give him glory. The scripture says, well, I'm going to give you the definition of fear. Fear is a natural, powerful, and primitive human emotion. It involves the universal biochemical response as well as the high individual emotional response. Fear alerts us to the presence of danger or the threat of harm, whether that danger is physical or psychological. So you can hear something that can take hold of you psychologically. That's why we don't exercise fear. Amen. The Bible says that he hasn't given us the, the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power and of love and a sound mind. I'm not operating in fear. How am I going to judge the world if I'm scared of everything? I'm going to give God praise. You know, fear is good to a certain extent. Certain things you ought to fear. Come on, give God glory. You don't play with no loaded weapon and turn around looking at it and, and pulling the trigger. Certain things you ought to fear. But when it comes to your soul and trusting in the Most High, you ought to turn all your fears over to Him. I'm putting my trust in Him. I'm not trusting in all this other stuff that's out here. Where y'all at? What's the sense in, in having a God if you can't trust Him? Some folk trust the devil more than they trust the Most High. They see the image of a little demon with horns sticking up on his head and get scared to death. Come on, give God praise. But I got news for you. If you get in God and get in him right and let him get in you, you can walk, you can be like the three Hebrew boys. Three Hebrew boys, they sit up and they talk to Nebuchadnezzar face to face. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear all this music that I'm getting ready to have my orchestra to play, I want you to bow down. They start striking up all the music, conducting it, producing with a harp and all the sounds, all the music, everybody, boom, bowing down. You look around, they standing straight up. Three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, standing up straight. Told the king, oh king, we're not even careful to answer you about this situation. I ain't got to think about it. I'm not going to bow. Come on, somebody. Unspoken word for you, don't bow. Do y'all know what I'm saying? Don't bow. You don't have to be like everything that's in the world. Don't bow. You don't have to do everything that the world does. Don't bow. 
Come on, give them praise. We're supposed to be a different people anyway. We're supposed to be different. We're not the, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We can't love this place. We got a word like a loose garment. Come on, give him glory. The scripture says, what does a man profit if he gain the whole world and then lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So you got the whole world, uh, the scripture weighed the whole world against your soul. <clears throat> this whole world is not even as valuable as your whole soul. Come on, give them praise. Because if you lose your soul, you lost everything. Let me move on a little bit further because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through in a minute because I want to fellowship and talk to people for a little while. Come on, give them praise. The scripture says in Mark chapter number 13, verse number 10, it says, and the gospel must be published among all nations. Now that scripture means that you got to be able to read it and acquire it in all nations. So that means it's not going to be in all the same language. It's got to be in different languages, right? For people to be able to understand it. And the gospel must be published among all nations. Then the scripture says, But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak you. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So we're going to have to start yielding to the Holy Ghost. And I ain't talking about, he ain't talking about start speaking in tongues. He's telling you that it's going to come a time where he's going to need somebody to speak words. And it's getting close to that hour, people. My job is to continue to warn the house of faith because a lot of the household of faith are losing it. They think it's all in the glitz and the glamour. They think that it, it's in how many members you got or what kind of car you drive. I'm going to give God praise. But what, would you, what you going to do if the, if the, uh, if the economy crashed? You can't, you can't even go to the gas station. You got that beautiful car and, and ain't no gas in it. It ain't going nowhere. You all remember back in the 70s when they called themselves talking about a uh, 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 gas crisis. You couldn't hardly find gas and then you had long lines waiting to fill up your car. You think that, that can't happen again? This crazy administration that's in there now already talking about we trying to work toward all the electric engines. So everything is changing right before our face. But the church, people are giving up on it. The churches are empty. I, I, when I was driving, a lot of people not even having church anymore. You got a few of them still having it. We're among the few. But a lot of these churches, the lot's empty. They're keeping the, the building up and all, but ain't nobody coming to church. So they almost got the game and gone, shutting the mouths of the people. They're muzzling us. See them hats y'all got on? They're trying to shed our mouth. Amen. But the scripture says, don't even think about what you're going to say. Yes, don't even think about it. Because the time is getting rough. Now I'm going to get to the good part because I'm almost done. Now listen to this. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death. And the father the son. And the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. 
So we don't know where this thing is going. We already been pitted against one another. Y'all with me? Us folk, you know, that believe one way, they calling us all kind of names. If y'all know what I'm saying. Like we don't have common sense. But just because you want to keep your body, the Bible said uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if you destroy the temple, then I'm going to destroy you. Come on, give him praise. So somebody's got to be able to keep this thing together because families, you know, nowadays uh, becoming more divided, more divided. Not just your family, not just their family, or most families becoming divided. And it's by design. It's by design. Listen to what the scriptures say now. Brother shall betray the brother to death and the father, the son, and the children shall rise against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. He's going to rat on you. going to tell on you that you ain't, you ain't doing what they told us to do, so I'm calling in on you. Listen at this verse, verse 13. I'm in Mark chapter number 13, uh, verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Is anybody in here going to endure to the end? Does anybody have a mind to endure to the end? I was thumping through Facebook, and uh, it looked like everybody wanted to be a star in Facebook. Everybody got their pose, and they, they got their little look. Every now and they put a little slogan up there to try to make them sound like they into the Lord, or into the Most High, but they taking their little pictures and poking their little lips. You know how y'all do. Sometimes they even put their the, the toenails on there and show them where they got their toes done. Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. Sometimes they just lose themselves. They put on something that's provocative. Hallelujah. So, so uh, people are adapting to change. Amen. Whereas, you know, we used to kind of want to be holy. Amen. Folks ain't done no holiness no more. Church folk. Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. Some of these crooked pastors, they got girlfriends uh -huh. and their wife got a boyfriend. Yeah. Now, you know that's messed up. Right. The pastor got them a couple of gals and, and, the, and the first lady got her a couple of dudes and a chick. Come on, give God praise. Y'all don't believe it, do you? And, and, and could preach like Paul. That don't mean nothing because you could preach. Come on, give him praise. I'm talking about end time. This is the end time stuff. This is the unspoken word. This is what you ain't hearing. Let's move on. This, listen at this. Verse 14 says, But when ye shall see abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that read it understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountain. So we're getting close to that right now because they're doing things that they ought not. He ain't standing in, in the holy place yet. You know, devil ain't, he, ain't, he ain't standing in the holy place yet. Hallelujah. But they setting up things. Things are being set up. Amen. As I get ready to close, go over to Revelation chapter number 13. And verse number 16. Now I have to speak biblically because, you know, they... They, they monitoring everything, so Amen. we sticking with the word. Amen. Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. Now check this out. 
In the book of Revelation, chapter number 13, verse number 16, it says, and he causes all, somebody say all, all. all. He causes all, both small and great. Do you know what that means? Don't matter, no matter how much money you got or how little money you got or what status you got or if you're just a homeless person. But it says, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, bond and free. I don't care if you're in prison. Right. Come on, give them praise. They're going to you know, require certain standards for you while you're in prison. Amen. He caused all of these folk to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now, we, we used to think that that means that the the church going to be gone. You know how we, oh, I ain't got to worry about that. I ain't going to be here. You changing that tune now. Because you starting to see too much stuff going on. And you still here. They said in preludes. They got a, a, a mandate going on now. And they protesting all over the world. Because they feel like the rights are being taken away. And guess what? They are. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me move on. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, let me say this. The mark of the beast is not totally Im implemented yet. Why you say that? Because you can still buy, you can still sell. Come on, give them praise. So it's not fully implemented yet, but it's on the way. They're setting the stage for it. They're training everybody for it. They're separating one another. You know, I read the scripture where, where men are going to be against one another and they're going to they're gonna have certain categories of people. Well, what do you think this is telling you right here? That no man might buy or sell, say if he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So that means that once this happens, if you decide to take this, there is no hope for you. Did you hear what I said? If you are marked, if they train you all the way, there's no hope. So that's why we can't be, we, we, we got to listen at the voice of the Most High. Amen. We got to follow the leading of the scripture. Amen. We got to make it up in our mind now. We got to make the major decision now so it'll already be made later. Right. You ain't got to think about it. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm feeling, feeling something in here. People, people are, you know, we got to turn back to them. It's time to turn back to them. Time out for, you, you ain't right, I'm righter than you and all. No. Let's turn to the scripture. All of us got something wrong. You look at me uh, uh, close enough, you might see a string hanging off my suit. Amen. Come on, give God praise. You got a piece of lint on his head. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to find something wrong with all of us. You looking at me too hard. Come on, give God praise. If you look at me hard enough, you're going to find something. I might well just go and tell you that. Stop looking because you, you don't find something. You look too hard because I'm still human. But I'm striving. The Bible says strive to enter in at the straight gate. Because many going to seek to enter and ain't going to be able. We got anybody striving in here? Or have you just thrown in the towel? You just gave up on it. You just go on, lay down, go on to bed. I ain't striving no more. No, I'm still striving. All right, let me get through with y'all. Listen at this. Here is wisdom. 
Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and the number is six hundred three score and six. Y'all know what that is, six, six, six. Listen at this. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your way, pour out the veils of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now, I want you to know that all angels work for the Lord. Amen. Did you know that? The devil's angels, they work for the Lord too. They got to do the dirty work. The, the, the most high, he, he got some angels that do the dirty work. Go clean that toilet out. Come on, give him praise. I ain't cleaning it out. I got some d dirty work folk that going to do that for me. Come on, give God praise. Go shovel up that dung. Come on, give God praise. He, he's got some dirty workers. You remember the scripture says that all of the sons of God appeared before the Lord and then and Satan came also. Amen. And he asked them, Whence coming thou? I'm going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. Amen. Then all of a sudden he said, Have you considered my servant Job? He was talking to the devil and gave him a job to do. So, what you think going on with all this stuff that's going on? All these mandates and all that stuff. The scripture says, and I heard a, a, a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the veils of the wrath of God up on the earth. So stuff is happening in this place. I got some videos on my channel showing you all kind of disasters. Amen. And just a couple of days ago, they had an earthquake in Haiti. Killed up hundreds of people. Come on, somebody. Verse number two says, And the first went and poured out his veil upon the earth, and there fell a noisome grease being sore upon men which had the mark of the beast. Let me read that to, again to you. And the first went and poured out his veil upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. If this is in the Bible, my friend, it's going to happen. Amen. That's why I say you can't take it, and you can't prepare yourself to take it. You can't train yourself to take it. You can't be in so much in love with the world that you take anything. Because if you take it, there is no possible chance. You say a noisome, uh, uh, grievous sore going to come up on folk. That, that noisome means it's painful. Grievous, amen, means that it's going to get to your, uh, your emotion. And other folk going to be able to look and see, oh my goodness. So what you going to do? Psalm 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So you got to stop fearing. Amen. Fear make you do things. You have some rabbit hunters out there on the field hunting rabbit. As long as that rabbit is down in the hole, he's safe. Amen. When you hear them leaves crunching and all of a sudden run up out that hole, boom, Amen. get shot. Amen. Stay in your safety place. If you're in the most high, stay in the safety zone. Amen. Don't run out and get your head blowed on. Right. Psalms 34 and 9 says, O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. So I'm satisfied. Amen. I'm satisfied in him. Amen. I ain't no rich person, no millionaire, you know, and I, and I ain't even trying to be. Amen. I'm going to give him praise. Sometimes you get too much money, you forget about the Lord. Folk get to hit the lottery, 
change their name, move out of town. Don't want nobody to find them. Somebody call them, how you find me? <laughs> don't want to share none of that change with nobody. Come on, give them praise. Way on the other side of the globe. But sometimes money will corrupt you. If you got a messed up heart and you don't know it, get a lot of money. You'll find out real soon. Because all money does is magnifies what's on the inside of you. The more money you got, the more it's going to reveal what kind of person you are. Why do you think all these folks is implementing all these crazy laws and doing all this stuff, shutting down stuff, and, and, and want everybody to line up for what they want? They want to control the world. The Georgia Stones say they want to reduce population down to 500 million. Do you know how many people is in the earth? Seven billion. Come on, give them praise. You get so much money, you want to kill everybody. You be like Simon Bar Sinister. You have to be a little older to know who he was. Now, anybody in here know who Simon Bar Sinister was? He was a cartoon character. <laughs> and he all his favorite slogan was, We will rule the world. <laughs> Implementing and making all kind of invention, science. He was a scientist. Right. Simon Boy Sinister was a scientist. Amen. Don't you know science is against God? No, all right, I'm going to let y'all go. Amen, amen. Come on, give him praise. I'm going to close. On the scripture, Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said to the people, Fear ye not. Somebody say, Fear not. Fear, not. Fear ye not, but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. So that's where we got to start standing in the salvation. All the stuff you see, all the perpetrators of evil, most I say, when I get through with them, it's going to be nothing but a memory. But I need somebody to stand. I need somebody to do like the three Hebrew boys. They threaten to throw you in the fire, but I'm still going to stand. Even though the flames leaping out, I'm going to still stand. Anybody got that kind of resolution on the inside that you're going to stand like that? That means something, to be able to stand, make it up in your mind, I'm standing up for it. Okay, here's my closing scripture. Revelation 28, excuse me, Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful, listen at this, that's the first one that's named. But the fearful, and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you can't be fearful. Y'all hear me? You got to get rid of fear. Perfect love Cast it out fear. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, give them praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Go over to St. John 10. We're getting ready to close. 10 and 10. When you get it, say amen. We're getting ready to let you go. Hallelujah. St. John 10 and 10. I'll read it to your hearing. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
Don't we see a lot of destruction going on right now? Don't we see a lot of killing going on? A lot of death is going on right now. Death is being glorified. Who do you think is in charge of that? The thief. The thief, he's not going to even come unless he can steal, kill, and tear up some stuff. That I ain't coming. Why not? Because I can't tear nothing up. So he ain't going to come unless he can tear something up. Unless he can steal, steal your joy, steal your happiness, steal your peace, kill, kill your love that you have for one another, kill your relationship, then destroy, destroy any hope of it ever returning again. Destroy your future. He said, I ain't coming unless I can do that. Don't invite me. If you don't want something, something's torn up, don't, don't invite me. Because uh, th this is what the devil's saying. If you invite him in your life, get ready for a tore down life. Come on, give him praise. If you invite him in, he's going to tear something up. Folk, you, you, when we read in the Bible where folk had demons cast out, the scripture said when they cast the devil out, he tore something on the way out. Come on, give God praise. You know how some, somebody, they, they got to go, but they're going to mm, hit you before they leave. That's how the devil is. He ain't going to just leave peacefully. He's going to tear something up. So don't invite them in. Don't let them have a toe in. You let the devil in, the Bible says, when the spirit uh, of a man uh, uh, is cast out of a man, he go to and fro in the earth in dry places, seeking a place of rest. Then he coming back to the house that he once had, amen, before he was cast out. Then he said, listen to what he said, I will go back into my house. He calling it his house. Right. I'm going back into my house, and, and, and then I'm going to take some buddies in there with me. Uh -huh. I'm going to give God praise. Uh -huh. You let that devil in, amen, he'll come in, and, and next time you leave, come back, he got a whole house full of demons. Amen. Sitting up in your favorite chair, with your house coat on, with your house shoes and the remote control in his hand, telling you to go fix me something to eat. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You try to get him out, he got all his buddies. Get him, uh, uh, Demon Joe. <laughs> He's sicking his buddies on you. you. Now you outside of your house talking about, I need... Need you to come and get these spirits out of my house. You don't let no devil come and run you out your house. Amen. Don't let him in. Right. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. He go back and he find that house swept and garnished, and he going to mess it up. Amen. House was clean when you got him out of there. Now chicken bones on the floor. Right. Trash turned over. Come on, give God praise. Dirty dishes in the sink. Yes, Lord. When you the toilet won't flush it. I'm going to give God praise. Just messed up your house. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to hear me today. I'm trying to keep your life clean because what's getting ready to come, it ain't taking no prisoners. The spirit that's coming now is not taking prisoners. We tried to take my grandson to see a little movie at the show. Uh, what was the name of that movie? Boss Baby, Baby Boss 2 or something. Movie just full of uh, 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 homosexuality overtone. Rainbows everywhere, showing naked butts. Come on, give God praise. Look, cartoon naked booty. Come on, somebody. 
showing all this stuff to kids. And you think I don't know the difference? I, I don't like this movie. They're they just trying to program the, these little kids into becoming acceptable to this spirit that's in the earth. Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to read this verse again. But the fearful, you can't be afraid. You got to stand up. If you don't stand for something, what you going to do? You going to fall for anything. So what are you standing for? You got to stand up for this word. Stand up for the truth. Stand up for holiness. Stand up for righteousness. If you don't get nothing else, get, get holiness and righteousness down on the inside. Get the love of the most high down on the inside. Get your sins washed away. Get filled with the spirit. Learn how to, how to love him. Learn how to live for him. See, I had to learn how to live this life. Amen. You don't come in here knowing everything about holiness. No. You got to sit down and learn. Amen. Sometimes you, you sitting down, your flesh want to get up and leave. I'm getting up out of here. I'm, I'm finna go. Sit there and let the word give you a good going over. Come on, somebody. Because you ain't going to get nothing. As soon as you leave, the devil, he out there waiting. As soon as you walk up, I'm glad you come. Come on. Glad you left. Hallelujah. Oh, I got something for you. Yeah, we finna have some fun. Yeah, you, you, when he get through with you, you going to have some fun, all right. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. You going he, to... How you spell fun backwards? You're going to say, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. I don't want no more devil. No, nah, we having fun. Come on, give them praise. You, you, you tell you, that, that's enough. But the devil, he, he ain't going gonna, gonna to keep on stuffing it down your throat till he make you sick. That's what made us get saved. Sin make you get saved. Amen. You get tired of sinning. Amen. You get tired of that devil all the time. Every time you turn around, here the devil is. Amen. No kind of happiness. No kind of peace. You get tired. Now, I want to get saved. I'm tired of this. That's what happened to me. I don't know what happened to you, but I got tired of sin. If you don't get tired of sin, the most I can't do nothing with you. Because you holding the devil's hand and trying to reach for his. He said, let the devil go if you want me. Come on, give him praise, somebody. You can't serve two masters unless you love one and hate the other. Come on, give him praise. Sometimes you got to look in your mirror and, and talk to yourself. Look in the mirror and say, Self, we getting saved. Look in that mirror and say, Self, shut up. We getting saved. Because you, you'll talk back to yourself. I don't know. I, I, I still got somebody. I ain't ready yet. You know, that's their favorite. I ain't ready yet. When you going to get ready? Well, I ain't made up my mind. You better make up your mind. Your mind is just, just like a, a gutter. Amen. Some folks' minds so messed up, you can't even talk to them. They, 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 they make a mess of your conversation. He, 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 I know what you're talking about. No, I ain't. That's your messed up mind. Come on, give God praise. The mind in the gutter. Your mind just, just like a, a, a field. You got an open field with nice grass. You keep walking across that field. Keep on walking across it. Keep thinking that way. Keep walking across that field. Pretty soon, you got a little trail. For you, okay, let's go down. It's a shortcut. People want a shortcut to life. People that got their mind in the gutter. 
Soon as something come, a thought come, they go straight down that trail. Because you done build a trail in your mind. They think terrible. That's why men, they can't even look at some uh, women. That's why women, y'all got to learn how to dress. Because some of y'all, Lord have mercy, y'all need to put on some of the stuff y'all put on. Me and trying to drive their car. Boom! <laughs> Running in the stuff. Cause you. You know how to throw it too, boy. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. They in the mirror in the morning. I'm messing me up some folk today. Hallelujah. Putting on that special, give me, give me that one. Right, right. This fits just right. Uh-huh. Don't dress like that. Come on, give God praise. You trying to mess somebody up? You know these men that got got these gutter minds. They how leaning out there, hey, baby. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you trying to act like you ain't ain't paying them no attention, right, right. smiling. <laughs> That's what Facebook is all about. I told you how they doing on Facebook. It's supposed to be a church channel. It's supposed to be church folk. Right. They cutting up. Old mothers, they on there. <laughs> Get saved. Come on, give God praise. Repent. Start over again. Come on, give him praise. Come on, let's start over. Come on, give God praise. Somebody say, I'm starting over. Hallelujah. That ain't nothing wrong. Let's, let's begin again. Hallelujah. And to get it right this time. You know you got off on some stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Perfect love casts out fear. Let us love one another. Let us have genuine love. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand and pray. We want you to know that we love you. We wouldn't tell you the truth if we didn't love you. We'll let you do whatever you want to do. You know, that's why children, amen, are so disobedient because they haven't been taught. They, They got away with everything. They spoiled. You got spoiled grown folks. They ain't never been taught nothing. Now they got the, the parent, they 